Yeah. Okay. His name is Sh- Shade Lagmeister, or it's just Sade. I'm gonna say Shade. It just sounds saucier. It's it's Sade. Wait, Shade. Wait. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Smooth um... opera. Come on. Come on. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> This is a Friday Q&A 433. This is the year 2037. Oh my God, we're still doing this? We're still doing this. We're still in early access? <laughs> I'm going to have to cut that. <laughs> Why? That's a funny joke. It's, it's, funny. it's a funny joke for us. It's not a funny joke for everyone else. This is the Friday Q&A where we answer questions from YouTube and Twitter. It's just the internet. The internet. Um, that you all submit. Um, we have... A variety of questions today. Some of the stuff we actually talked about yesterday, which is why I was like, you know what? Zabir can handle this. I think Zabir can handle this. Sure. Um, the first question is from, and I had to look it up, but the first question is, will hematite slash iron have any use in the game going forward? And that question is from Shade Lagmeister okay. or, or just Sade. But I want to I want to say Shade. <laughs> so uh, regarding hematite and iron, uh, yes, I think so. I think we will definitely find more uses for it. Um, I think uh, speaking with the designers, there is certainly a desire to have um, a lot more resources actually in the game, not mm-hmm. just the the current ones. We want to expand that that uh, set um, and actually have much more uses for them. Um, there is a thing that I worked on with Samantha um, a few weeks ago um, that was the initial stages of kind of a recipe table. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's this gigantic Excel spreadsheet uh, with you know everything that's in the game currently. And uh, we're building up the mechanisms and systems so that uh, we can start throwing in recipes much faster. So we kind of have to build the tools so we can build the game. Right. Um, a lot of the stuff in the game was kind of, uh, we, we didn't have kind of industrial class tools, if you will. Right. Um, and so it's going to be building a lot of those tools so that Samantha and Aaron can start, you know, punching in more recipes. Uh, and then, you know, we can start building stuff faster. Cool. Um, so yeah, it's kind of in the tools development phase. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll find uses for it and uh, we'll, we'll add more stuff too. I think something to note there is there's also been some talk, and obviously this is purely speculation or just thinking about things, of like having uh, multiple items be on it for, for, like be used for crafting. So you might have to like mm-hmm. use this thing and then use that thing, use a gas, and then it's hard to, just like mixing certain things in order to create. Y- yeah, 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 exactly. Um, right now, I think everybody on the team is, is somewhat... Uh, um, or someone recognizes that uh, all our recipes are just like one resource mm-hmm. just to produce the one thing, right? Um, yeah, we definitely want to get to a point where, you know, it'll require an amalgamation of a whole bunch of different things, right? Um, and you'll produce intermediary resources, which then can be consumed to produce, uh, you know, even more interesting right. uh, resources. And so they'll kind of be uh, this chain yeah. uh, that you need, need to go through. We have that right now with terrain as a resource where you get the... Hi- I'm sorry. The like hydrazine thing it's just called fuel or whatever but like the hydrazine crystals yeah and then you make ammonium which is the stable state and then you can process them into hydrazine right right refined hydrazine yeah um okay cool that sounds awesome Mm -hmm. next question uh as it stands unique resources to each planet oh this is from the forums um can be found in around a single base meaning there's a little reason to really explore a planet especially the larger ones um this is uh, this is a debatable topic but i'll go with you on this um Will this change in the future? Will there be distributed biomes and resources as a general example? Yes. So that I can I can confidently say, yeah, that, that is definitely the thing that I'm personally working on right now. Yes. Um, large part of that is, as I'm mentioning, um, kind of building up our tools. Uh, Terrain 2.0 is, is a, a large part of this effort. Mm-hmm. Um, currently, we didn't have a, a super robust way to author a huge variety of biomes on, on uh, the same planet. Um, and so we want to be able to do that. And once we start being able to do that, then we can distribute certain types of resources into certain types of biomes yeah. or at certain depth levels on the planet and, um, and only certain types of resources on certain types of planets, right? Um, those are all, uh, we, we need to build the tools so that, uh, for instance, like Adam, if he's going to be authoring a lot of the planets, has the ability to actually control all that stuff. Yes. Um, a lot of the, uh, 
tools that we have right now to build the planets uh, don't give us quite the amount of flexibility that we want. And this is uh, one of the reasons we identified uh, the terrain system kind of needed a, a, you know, an upgrade yeah. is uh, these were the, kind of the controls that keep kept coming up in discussions of like, hey, we want to kind of try and do this and we want to do this. Um, and we identified that, yeah, we need to build, uh, you know, rebuild up the tools uh, so that it gives the designers um, more power to, right. to author the, the content that way. Yeah, and think about like the actual gameplay loop and how those things like work together. It's not mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. Adam authoring, it's also then thinking about w in what stage you are in the game and how, you know what planets you have to travel to and can you mm -hmm. get there? And how, right now we have some issues with that where you know if you can't research a certain thing, you might not be able to get off your home planet. Mm -hmm, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, um, and that's yeah. a whole other conversation with research that we can cover. Right, right. At a later date. Yeah, progression needs to be figured out. Yep. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, cool. This one's from Always Decent. This is from a YouTube question. Um, please add crashing objects. We would like to see being able to actually see cargo crash into the ground with details to look at would be really cool. Uh, yeah, uh, I like that idea a lot. Um, I think it would add uh, a lot of dynamism to mm -hmm. the game and kind of make the world feel a little bit more alive. Um, there might be some interesting narrative questions as far as like, you know, why is there something out there just crashing in, 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 into your planet? Right. Um, but yeah, I think in, in from the perspective of having satellites and other things that are that, that feel more alive and that are kind of that, that you can kind of see orbiting a planet mm -hmm. or uh, sometimes, yeah, they do come crashing back down. Right. Um, Emergent is, is, things. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, th I think we can definitely pull off, uh, especially with a game like uh, Astroneer where the terrain is deformable. Um, we, we, sh we should play up to that strength, right? We can right. actually have something crash into the planet and deform the terrain as it, as it happens. Right. Um, you know, other games would struggle with that, whereas that's one of our strengths. And so we, should, we, we, we definitely want to leverage that um, uh, and, and try to work that in as many opportunities as we get. Um, that's something that the designers will kind of start to think about once a lot of the earlier foundational systems like research and modularity and, you know, mm -hmm. all these kind of things are, are, are figured out. But, um, yeah, I guess uh, to say encounters, if you will. Right? Yes, that's, uh, that's where I would put it on the roadmap, like complex encounters or encounters. Right, right. Yeah, interesting encounters, right? Basically, you're, you're, you know, running along and all of a sudden you kind of see this, like, something burning in the sky, right? And you're like, oh, interesting, what is that? Um, you kind of trace it. And, you know, once you get there, you see like a smoldering satellite, right? And now you're like, oh, okay, great. I get to, you know, pull some resources off. Um, or, you know, whatever that might be. I'm, yes. not, I'm not as creative. I let the, <laughs> the designers kind of come up with what you do once you get there. But there's some uh, interesting things being talked about with that as regard, in regards to that, especially with modularity where like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there might be, and once again, disclaimer, uh, there might be certain modules that you only be able to get from crashes and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they'll help you upgrade your base you know, in cool ways that you would never really think about. And they're not really part of the progression tree. So right, right. Yeah, exactly. So when we talk about randomness and like RNG for research, that like could play a part where there are certain modules that are really valuable, but you can only get them from crashes or by getting yeah. to other planets or stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. there's some cool ideas there. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it also would be interesting to have uh, uh, basically more dynamism in mm -hmm. the game, right? Like, because the game does feel static now. Yes. So. The next question is from uh, Long John Vla Vlasiu. Sorry, I probably really messed that up. Um, and this is uh, an automation question. So it's, okay. how about a conveyor belt component? Much like placing power extension cables, you place conveyor belt components. This will allow you to collect resources and place them on a conveyor belt to t transport them out of cave. Yeah, so we have talked about this so many different times. Um, yes. Yeah, it's it's an interesting uh, topic of discussion on on how to um, you know potentially have either something like automation or or other mechanisms to do this right. Uh, personally, like I like the conveyor belt idea mm -hmm. uh, the 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 most, um, and an incarnation of that might be that you kind of. Um, lay out some sort of cable at first, right? And yeah. all it can do, it's, it's sort of like your tether. It kind of just gets you, you know, power or oxygen or something. Um, and then you can upgrade that and it kind of turns into a more powerful, you know, cable that transfers more energy. Yes. Um, and then eventually, you know, you could upgrade that into a conveyor belt, right? And then you can, you can send through stuff through the conveyor belt. Um, and this kind of progression uh, sounds quite interesting, right? Like, so we can do, um, we've, we've talked about doing something like that. What 
ultimate form it'll take, uh, I think still we really need to figure out. Yes. Um, like one of the prototypes uh, we built, this was this was quite a while ago, uh, where we had a rail system, and in the rail system, you know, you could you would basically you would have a minecart and you would throw something on it, and the minecart would would you know travel from one endpoint to the other. Um, and as soon as we did that, we found that. Um, there were major performance issues when you started to build out a larger mine, uh, you know, a craft or craft. Uh, when you try, exactly. When, when you try to build out a larger track network. Um, and so we and had logic to, that like comes in with that. And yeah, 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 exactly. And so, um, we were like, well, we kind of built this interesting thing, but if it's so slow that nobody could really use it, um, you know, we, we need to kind of go back to the drawing board and kind of, kind of, uh, rework how some of this, uh, uh, needs to work. Yeah. Um, so one idea that we were talking about yesterday, I get, because it's just purely mm-hmm. speculating is like, um, te- you always use tethers to like go into caves. You always yeah. use tethers whenever you venture from your base. And what if that was like a waypoint system that where you could then move things uh, uh, down that line somehow. Right. Know, eventually. Right. Cause they're already there. They're already taking up, um, space. Yeah. Um, and so there's just ideas that, like that, that get thrown around where, um, I think it would be really cool to have uh, automation. I, I would lump it under automation, but you can maybe use it in another area of mm-hmm, mm-hmm. of the roadmap. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We'll see what what uh, Aaron and, and Samantha kind of come up in in, in that space. Uh, so yeah, I can't I can't say exactly what incarnation it'll take, but um, the desire is definitely there to, or at least from the engineering perspective, to improve the runtime system so that we can kind of support uh concepts like conveyor belt and rails and and those kind of things yes. where um things are efficient well they're efficient and then they have to operate like far away from you so like if right. you're on another planet and you're you have all uh, this automation happening like right right that, all that math still has to happen while you're uh yep. in in game kilometers away from that exactly that so yeah and 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 it has to work across multiplayer yes exactly. yeah and so. it has to work across safe games <laughs> and xbox and pc uh, yes. So yes, there, there, uh, there, there is work to be done. So. Okay. Cool. And we should probably get back to that. Then. Yes. I. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. As you can tell from my scruffiness, <laughs> I there's a lot of work to be done. Yes. Okay. Cool. So uh, that's it for the Q and A this week. If you want to send questions, you can submit them on Reddit, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook, Discord, wherever, um, and I'll answer them. We'll try and answer as many as we can here. Some things we can't talk about, but we will try our best. Yep. Cool. Okay. Thanks so much. Bye.